The traveler sees what he sees. The tourist sees what he has come to see, said the English writer Chesterton. This expedition has completely reformatted our consciousness. We began to feel stronger and see deeper. Every site has become not just another location for a selfie, but an opportunity to understand our true selves on a global scale. That fact that the human is a super small and insignificant in the world. This trip helped us get back to our roots, take a look at life from the perspective of our ancestors. In the previous episode, we met with wonderful shepherds of Don Jailao, breathed the fresh air of the breathtaking Asai Plateau, and were amazed by the wonders of engineering at the Asu Tugan Observatory. In this episode, we will continue to conquer rivers and mountain passes. Stay tuned, follow the hashtag across Central Asia. The most interesting is yet to come. Aziza examined all the red stones of the canyon in the valley of the Jinishke River to take cool photos. Everyone liked this place so much that we decided to stay here for the night. By the way, no one has cancelled the tradition of repeating our photo. Everything was so good. Before flowing into the Chilik River, the Jinishke River flows over 50 kilometers along the valley of the same name. Jinishka Valley is a very beautiful place, wild and secluded. This is an uninhabited corner of nature where only shepherds occasionally drive their cattle to free pastures far into the mountains. So morning has come and we decided to go upstairs to look at the panorama and we decided to do this, of course, with the help of my new friend. I'm already a professional. We got to the top and what can I tell you here? The view is incredibly nice. When Aziza was horseback riding around the camp, she noticed three red lonely standing stones. They resembled human figures bound in prayer. Our guide said that this sculpture is called Three Monks. According to the legend, three monks lived here. One reconciled the quarreling, the other visited the sick, the third took a vow of silence and went to a deserted valley. Somehow the hermit decided to find his brothers and later found them weakened and unable to continue their work. Then he decided to help them. He poured water into the bowl and said, look at the water. The water was muddy, they could see nothing. A little later when the water settled, the silent men asked the monks to look again at the bowl. The brothers saw their reflections there and realized that by living in this society, people are unable to see their sins, but by silence in nature, they would achieve enlightenment. In memory of those monks, God created this sculpture. It is symbolic that the whole time that the film crew was at the three monks, an eagle was flying above them, as if it was guarding their peace. During our equestrian expedition, Aziza turned into a skilled horseman. However, the horses did not always like to take part in filming of our show. Sometimes they acted up like real actors, and Aziza had to calm them down. Let's go! Let's go there! I know, let's go! Come on! Aziza copes with taming the horses just like ancient Botai people. 
In the 80s of the last century, a huge number of bones were found belonging to about 70,000 horses at the site of an ancient settlement near the village of Botai of the North Kazakhstan region. This led scientists to the idea that the tribes that lived near Rishim more than 3,500 years BC have already domesticated the horse. They learned how to make fermented horse milk and used a horse as a transport. Ninety percent of the food of Botai people was horse meat. Molecular biological studies used scrapings from ceramics. It turned out that there was kumis, horse milk. Can you imagine? That is, 6,000 years ago, the Botai people tamed, domesticated the horse. It is possible that someone could have tamed them before them, but it was the Botai people who domesticated and made it the element of the economy. Riding a horse in the steppe must be considered as an economic and technological breakthrough. The rider on horseback was able to travel long distances and hunt more productively. Domestication of the horse provoked the advent of related inventions. They first invented tools such as a lasso in order to catch a herd of horses. They were the ones who mastered horse riding for the first time, learned to ride a horse on horseback. For this they came up with things like bridle and a bit. It is difficult to overestimate the importance of horse breeding, equestrianism for humanity. It can be compared to anything. It was the same great milestone in the development of Homo sapiens, like taming of the fire. The Botai people have created the ground for the development of horse role. Among the Saka and Hans tribes, the war horse was considered sacred. The Kazakhs did not sacrifice war horses and elite horses, and their meat was not eaten. They were treated almost like people, and they died as they aged. So, for example, this story of the famous horse of the great Batir Kabanbai named Kubas. According to the stories, Kabanbai was very athletic and almost three meters tall, so not every horse could stand him. The stallion Kubas turned out to be his match and became his best friend, the Bhatia went through all his famous trips with his faithful horse. Aziza also never for a moment parted with the horse entrusted to her, constantly stroking it, talking, and it seems that the horse understands her. We made an excursion into the past to find out how horses became man's best friends, and now we'll further explore the valley of the Zhenishka River. Rumor has it that gold can be found in the upper reaches of the Zhenishka River. If you suddenly get together, be careful. Do not get lost, carried away by searches. In the vicinity, there is a thick spruce forest. Take a local guide with you to go along the safe paths. He will tell you, for example, that through the neighboring Algabaz Gorge, you can go directly to Kainde, and through Jawanash, the road leads to Kolsai Lakes. And our expedition is not looking for gold, so we will go our way. The next destination is the Dalashik Mountain. Dalashik is one of the eastern mountains of the Transili Alatau. The name consists of two words, Dala, Stap, and Shak or Chik, the name of one of the tribes that once inhabited these places. Chik or Chigil is a Turkic-speaking union of tribes that lived in the 10th, 11th centuries in the territory of modern East Kazakhstan, Almaty, and South Kazakhstan regions.
An expedition is a serious thing that includes cars, people and horses. We were lucky that all this was not mixed up, but it all worked out according to the established schedule. Right now, for example, according it is time of the staging post. Dear friends, now you'll have a unique opportunity to see how a tourist town will be built on the site of this meadow. Let's go help. Come on, let's go. We will not help. Just look. Since I was a child, I spent a lot of time outdoors, in the wild. That is, tents for me are not surprising. Just the other day, I found my childhood pictures where I stand next to the tarpaulin tent. Now, for me, mountains are the necessary environment for some kind of inner meditation, so I can put my mind in order, energize. It is a must for me. Don't forget about our tradition photo time. Right here, Aziza made a fun photo with the camp on the background, which got almost 9,000 likes. Just repeat the photo, post it with the hashtag across Central Asia and wait for the prizes. Voila! Our camp is ready and now we will prepare for the most enjoyable thing in our expedition. Lunch! While the aroma emanating from the camp cauldron inspired Aziza, the cameramen were carried away by the flow of life of the local flora and fauna. One can observe endlessly how unknown insects while in mating dance against a background of green foliage or a snail crawls along a stem mimicking the color of a branch. The heart stops beating when you look at the colors change. Bright red strawberry, floral lilac, yellow, white and emerald green. Like in a kaleidoscope. And all this magic happens accompanied by the cradling noise of a mountain river. Aziza took advantage of the proximity of the river for sanity purposes. Attention! A workshop from Aziza Ibadulina on how to wash feet in an ice mountain river. We take one leg, lower it into the water, freeze, shake and rinse. Get a white towel and wipe elegantly. The masterclass is over. Thanks to everybody, you are free. The camp is located near the village, and we managed to get a little information from the locals how they live in these parts, how the communication with the big land is going on. For example, if you look there, you can see that a landslide crawled near the village in 2018, blocking the road, but now the road is cleared and functioning. In general, the expedition vehicles went through the mountain road successfully, Minor breakdowns along the way do not count. Taking into account the fact, the highlands are high-risk roads. But we are lucky, landslides and rockfalls have bypassed us.
The following story was shared with us by locals. There in the distance, there is a peak with a height of 4,024 meters with a funny name, Kizim Shack. If you don't know how this translates, take an interest because when in winter the peak has a lot of snow, they say the similarities are simply incredible. In general, now I want to come here in the winter and look at it myself. If you don't know, Kizim Shack translates from Kazakh as a girl's breast. Very sharp national name. In clear weather, the surrounding mountains are very visible. It creates figurative toponyms. Our camp is located in a very beautiful place. Yesterday we had just the opportunity to watch a stunningly beautiful sunset. To think about the meaning of life, about life in general, and when sleeping to watch a beautiful dawn in the morning. We say goodbye to the place called Dalashik. Bye-bye, you will forever remain in our hearts. We continue our trip. The wandering wind is calling for the road. The Amanjol Pass is located east of the Chiliko Kamin Lintel between Zayliski and Kungay Alatau at an altitude of 3,519 meters above sea level. And now we cross the Amanjol Pass. By the way, the name Amanjol quite possibly comes from the name of the Bata. Well, imagine a Bata lived here in ancient times, defended his native lands, and died in a battle. And people decided to name the pass in honor of him. By the way, many names appeared here that way. Amanjol was not named after the Bata and not as a wish for a happy journey. Our team rummaged in the archives and discovered the history of deciphering the name of the Amanjol Pass in Valery Karablov's book on the Transili Alatau, Journey into the World of Names. Everything turned out to be much more complicated than we thought. The name of this pass was given by a shepherd named Kayukin. Once he grazed sheep and the weather turned really bad. Relatives already began to think that the shepherd died with all his herd, but Kayukin returned alive and unharmed, and had the sheep with him. When asked how he was saved, he told everyone that the pass saved him. How exactly it saved him, nobody knows, but the pass has since been called Amanjo. Aziza has already quite mastered a horseback and she even decided to talk with the expedition photographer Alexander Kuznetsov during a horse ride. And there was something to talk about because Aziza's hobby is photography. And with whom to talk about photography if not with a photographer? I wanted to ask you, you are such a very experienced photographer, cameraman, but still, do you like to take pictures of the city or nature more? I love the most taking pictures of nature, travel photography, landscapes. Look at this photo. Do you like photos more? I like photos more, especially travel genre. I like minimalistic photos when there is one person in the middle of the wild. I love to show the scale, the scale of all nature that surrounds us. That man is a super small and insignificant in this world. Yes, a person is generally insignificant in the midst of all this. Okay, what could you advise to a novice photographer when they first go to the wild? Take more batteries. I will advise you to choose the right clothes, not to take a lot of extra equipment, extra things and not to rush when shooting outdoors. You need to wait for the regime, sunset, dawn time, something like that. Well, and probably the last question, since I have also been very interested in photography lately and I'm looking for cool locations. Where do you think in Almaty, or in Kazakhstan in general, where are the top most beautiful locations? Again, I can't name exactly one place. In my opinion, the most interesting locations are located in Almaty region. 
There are various landscapes, mountains, mountain lakes, deserts, cliffs, snow peaks, just everything. And in the summer you can visit the desert when it is plus 40 and at the same time drive two hours from the city and be in the snowy mountains. Yes, but of course this is what our country is famous for. Well, everybody, let's go to the top locations. We wish that by the end of the expedition, Alexander would have accumulated a whole collection of excellent travel pictures. And we continue to travel to the best locations of Almaty region. Do not forget to follow our movements using the hashtag Across Central Asia. The Yamanjal Pass, which we left behind, is the most convenient passage from the headwaters of the Turgen River to the valley of the Chilik River. Chilik is the largest river of Zailiski Alatau, one of the largest left tributaries of the Ili River. One of the wonders of Amati region, Bartogai Reservoir is located on the Chilik River as well. The history of the construction of the Batogai Reservoir is inextricably linked with the creation of the Great Almaty Canal. In the 80s, Almaty and its suburbs grew rapidly, the population increased, the cultivated areas needed to be expanded and there was nowhere to water them. Then, Dinmuk Ahmed Kunaev ordered the construction of a 168-kilometer-long canal. Construction cost the Republic 270 million Soviet rubles. The Chilik River is a typical mountain river. In places of spill, it reaches 50 meters. In the 80s, a stone embankment dam 330 meters long was built here. So the Bartogai Reservoir was formed, which serves as a place of accumulation of water, with the help of which fields are irrigated in the summer. An artificial reservoir of 320 million cubic meters on the Chilik River was built so that in the summer months, it can accumulate water for irrigation of the fields. In winter, water is stored in the reservoir, which in summer is discharged into the river. From the spillway, water flows away under great pressure with a huge fountain about 80 meters high and is split into billions of tiny splashes, due to which there is always a rainbow and fog. This must be seen with your own eyes. But anyways, we will show you. The gentle rocky shores of Bartagai are practically devoid of vegetation, apparently due to the harsh climate. But in the floodplain of the Chilik River, it is surprisingly beautiful. A picturesque grove stretches in a deep gorge. The river got its Kazakh name thanks to the local tree, willow, shilik, which grows in abundance here. Chilik is a river with character and one of the most important types of outdoor activities on such a river is water tourism, namely rafting. The famous rapids, barrels and shafts of Chilik are very fond of rafters. Weekend tours are carried out here from Almaty. I cannot even describe in words what kind of adrenaline people get here. By the way, at that time I was a little scared. It turns out, anyway, something hits you. One person generally fell into the river and there they lost the paddle. Then they caught it, but it was a lot of fun. By the way, the rafting on the Chilik River begins at the Batogai Reservoir. So mark this place in your travel map. You will not regret it. On this positive note, we are finishing our episode. Together with Aziza Aibadulina, we looked at the Zhinishka Valley from the top of the canyon. We are touched by the legend of three monks and talked with a photographer about the insignificance of a person on a global scale. The Dalashik Mountain and the Chilik River gave us energy and strength to continue our fascinating trip in Almaty region.
follow hashtag across Central Asia. Travel with us. See you in the next episode.